My entire workflow still revolves around M1. M1 Mac Mini, it's a Plex server and it's where all my time machine backups go. M1 Pro MacBook Pro, it's my on-the-go editor. My main editor is an M1 Max Mac Studio and my iPad is an M1 iPad Pro. And the crazy thing is, is that they all still feel more than capable of doing what I ask of them. And yet, Apple quietly launched the M5 inside of the 14-inch MacBook Pro, the iPad Pro, and the Apple Vision Pro, which is the first time the Apple Vision Pro has been updated since the M2 chip. And it's funny because for a lot of people, the M4 chip was probably more than powerful enough, but now Apple has improved on it, and the chipset itself has the highest laptop single core score on Geekbench that I have ever seen. And not just that, when you scroll through Geekbench, you can't find a laptop chip with a higher single core score. I, I dare you, go ahead and try. The highest single core score I found, period, was an Intel Core i7-12700K with 12 cores that got 6,705. But that's a desktop chip, and that draws 180 watts. Meanwhile, this chip is either a 9-core or a 10-core system, and it's in a tablet, and it's in a laptop, and the laptop, Apple claims, gets up to 24 hours of battery life. Good God. So I guess we'll start out by just talking about the chip specifically, some of the differences there, and then we'll talk about kind of how it's implemented with each of these devices. So starting off with the chip itself, like I said, you have a nine core and a 10 core version, depending on which platform you get it in. Uh, the nine core is specific to the iPad Pro if you get a lower storage version, but the MacBook Pro, and from what I can tell the Vision Pro, both have the 10 core variant. Now, alongside these nine or 10 core CPUs, you also get a 10 core GPU across the board with Apple's new neural accelerators. These were introduced with the iPhone 17 and 17 Pros on the A19 and A19 Pro chips, which is why I tell people, if you wanna know what Apple's gonna do with their computer chips next, take a look at what they do with the iPhone chips first. Alongside the CPU and GPU improvements, they also have increased the speed of the memory from 120 gigabytes per second to 153 gigabytes per second. Now, this is good in a system where the memory is shared between the CPU and GPU because it means that system tasks will feel snappier and graphics tasks will perform better. However, I would be remiss if I didn't point you to this video after you watch this one, because if you intend to do anything that is very graphics heavy, but also pulls a lot of system memory, it is always better to get more memory, period, which is good because you can get 16, 24, or 32 gigabytes for this new MacBook Pro. And well, your memory options on the iPad Pro are kind of tied to storage, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. Again, the reason being is that even with the memory being faster, it's still shared between system and graphics. So if you have something that is asking a lot from system and a lot from graphics, you're gonna run into swap and that's not good in the long run. So those are the improvements to the new M5 chip itself. So now let's talk about what it's getting integrated in because that's kind of the easy one because not a lot has changed. Starting off with the MacBook Pro cosmetically, Nothing has changed, literally nothing. Same keyboard, same screen, same speaker, same colors, even though Apple seemed to hint at a blue. Nope, everything's the same. Internally, however, you can now go up to four terabytes of storage, which has also been improved to PCIe Gen 4. But for the love of God, please do not spend that much money on a drive inside your machine. Go with external because in my opinion, as soon as you need more than one terabyte internally, you are just asking for trouble. Doesn't matter if it's Apple, doesn't matter if it's PC, don't have that much storage to save things locally. Just go with external and keep your stuff backed up. Especially considering that that storage option costs as much as an iPhone 17 Pro Max, $1,200, don't do that. Anyway, when it comes to the actual base configuration of this machine, it costs $1,600, same as it did before, for the same fantastic screen, great build, great port selection. All of it is just a really good package. If you need more ports than what you get on a MacBook Air, and you want that higher refresh rate display, the XDR display itself, or if you wanna be able to go up from 16 gigabytes of memory to 32 or even 24, I think it's gonna be a great build for you. Now, when it comes to the iPad Pro, this is where things get a little different. So again, everything externally is exactly the same. Same camera, screen, port, single port, same options when it comes to keyboard accessories, pencil, all of it. But you do have different chips depending on which storage configuration you buy. And that also includes memory. 
if you go for the 256 or the 512 gigabyte version of the iPad Pro, you're gonna get 12 gigabytes of memory, which is still more than what you had on the previous generations, and you also get the nine core CPU version of the M5. 10 core GPU though is the same across the board. But if you bump up to the one terabyte or now the two terabyte version of the iPad Pro, you get 16 gigabytes of RAM and the full 10 core CPU, same as what you get in the M5 MacBook Pro. Now the base configuration is still pretty expensive at $1,300 and 512 gigs is $1,500. So you're really gonna have to pick your poison when it comes to how much storage you wanna have internally. Again, I don't recommend anything close to two terabytes. If you really want 16 gigs because it is your go-to laptop instead of having a real laptop, sure, go with a terabyte for that 16 gigs of RAM, but I still can't justify spending that much money on something running iPad OS. Especially now that it has such a powerful chip and you know the MacBook Pro is gonna perform better because it has active cooling, but yet you can also get that chip in an iPad Pro, it's just, I don't understand iPad OS. And this is coming from somebody who uses an iPad Pro regularly as a drawing tablet and as a secondary display for my MacBook Pro. Oh, uh, actually going off script here for a minute because I just realized I made a mistake. Uh, you can also have the M5 in the 11 inch iPad Pro. All the pricing I just listed was for the 13 inch iPad Pro, but the 11 inch also has the M5 chip. That one starts at $1,000 and then it goes up from there to 1200 dollars 1600 and 2000. This is why I hate covering things right as they come out because I always make some mistake somewhere and I have to catch it later. Anyway, I think between the MacBook Pro and the iPad Pro, these are the two where as much as I don't really like iPad OS and I mainly just use it for drawing, I know there are quite a few people, even people I know personally, who will actually use their iPad Pro and if they get an M5 version, the M5 iPad Pro as a laptop and probably take decent advantage of that chipset. But if you're like me and you lean more into the higher demand tasks, you're probably gonna wanna go with the M5 MacBook Pro. But now for the weirdest one, the Vision Pro got its first update since it came out running the M2 chip and yes, it has now the M5 chip, and it looks like they also improved the headset. I say the headset, the head strap. So just like the other devices, the pricing hasn't changed. This thing is still a $3,500 headset made of aluminum, so it's gonna be heavy on your face. I've tried one and it's very heavy and uncomfortable, but it looks like they're trying to alleviate a bit of that because the new strap has a rear piece and a top piece. You know, the thing they should have done from the start, but who am I to judge? But aside from that head strap, just like all the other devices we've just talked about, everything else is gonna be the same. In fact, it's still using that same R1 chip, which is what they use for the real-time data and all the camera processing, so that actually hasn't been improved, and you still get the same 256, 512, or one terabyte storage options. Something I will be curious about though with the Vision Pro is if Vision OS will now take advantage of the ray tracing capabilities of the M5 because we've had ray tracing functionality since what, the M3? And that was available on the MacBook Pros and the iPad Pros and pretty much every other Apple computer. But the M2 didn't have any sort of ray tracing capabilities and now it does or the M5 does in the Vision Pro. So. I'll be curious if apps start taking advantage of that or if Vision OS itself will take advantage of that to better match the lighting of the environment, things like that, but I guess time will tell. Aside from that though, the only other change I noticed was that it seems like Apple found another 30 minutes of battery life going from two and a half hours to three hours of video playback for the Vision Pro. Still a far cry from a, quite a few other competitors, but hey, an improvement is an improvement. But again, just like the other devices we talked about, the external changes, aside from the head strap in this case, are non-existent. It is exactly the same looking as the previous generation. So if you've been waiting for the MacBook Pro or the iPad Pro or the tens of you who've been waiting for the Vision Pro to get updated, but you still like the current designs of these products, well, I have good news because this M5 chip is definitely a solid upgrade for what I would consider to be mid or even upper mid demanding tasks. I think the MacBook Pro is probably gonna be the best place to take full advantage of it since it does have the better battery, the better display, active cooling, the whole nine yards. But the iPad Pro is definitely going to be, you know, for the people who use an iPad Pro, it's definitely gonna be a notable improvement. And again, for the tens of people who use the Vision Pro, 
well, this performance upgrade I'm sure will be very appreciated. But yeah, those are the improvements with the M5 chip. I do find it kind of weird that Apple just quietly dropped these. Like I'm still working on my review for the iPhone 17 Pro Max and these just kind of came out of nowhere on these devices, but it is what it is, so. Let me know what you all think in the comments down below about this chip. Are you interested in this? Are you gonna go kind of the route that I did and buy something used and run it into the dirt? Or do you like buying the new stuff and running those into the dirt or running them till trade-in? A lot of people seem to actually really lean more towards trade-ins to pay for the next thing. So I'll be curious. Let me know in the comments down below. Huge shout out to the members of this channel. Check it out over there, $3 a month. You get wallpapers that I'm gonna be adding each month or as often as I can with the move happening. I've also got a couple other things like shout outs at the end of the videos and well just go click on it and see if you're interested maybe join up thank you so much for watching like and subscribe if you enjoy this content and i hope to see you all in the next video make sure to be there and have a good one